Good morning. Good morning. I want to give you a message of hope today. And I woke up at 4.30 this morning and was so excited about being able to tell you something that I thought would be important and helpful to you. I don't know about you, but um, watching the news <laughs> and being in, in uh, kind of a quarantine situation feels kind of like it's gaining momentum. It feels like a snowball. I don't know if you've ever started rolling a snowball down a hill and it may start off all beautiful and white, <clears throat> but as it goes down the hill, it picks up rocks and sticks and, and all kinds of trash and it just keeps rolling and it gets going faster and faster and you don't want to get in front of a giant rolling snowball. I kind of had a, the same experience one time with Dan. You know, Dan, my husband, who is a quadriplegic, is in a giant motorized wheelchair, weighs about 350 pounds. And uh, one time he was um, visiting uh, from his nursing home uh, here where I live in, in a little housing co-op, and his wheelchair lost electricity while we were out in the middle of a street. Well, it was a, a Sunday afternoon, and... <laughs> Everybody that lives here at that time was older than me, and so I couldn't go knock on doors and try to get help. And I was under time pressure because um, the city buses that delivered him here and picked him up had a policy of only waiting five minutes. So um, I couldn't uh, run home and get my phone and call them because he was down the street, you know, almost a block away. And... Uh, uh, if you didn't catch the bus, they would leave you there for sometimes up to four hours. And that just <laughs> was a fate we did not want to suffer. And so um, it was an incline to get from where he was in our little housing co-op up to my unit. And I pushed Dan, who weighs about 180 pounds, in this 350 pound wheelchair up a hill. And when I got to the top of it, and I, I thought, what? how did I do that? You know, I, that had to be some sort of supernatural strength. But I also thought, gee, wasn't that stupid? I mean, surely there had to be another way to do that. And so <clears throat> I understand that feeling of being, you know, having a, a heavy burden and either having to push it or, or <clears throat> in the case of the circumstances we're having right now uh, in our country of staying, <laughs> st staying far enough ahead of the rolling snowball that you don't get smashed by it. I began a series, um, an introduction to a series about the phases of faith. And I assured you that faith has three phases, the phase of the promise, the phase of the contradiction, and the phase of the resolution. And I'm going to, my next video session will be about the promises. And we're going to be studying the life of Abraham and how those three phases are so evident in his life, not just one time, but over and over again, cyclically and overlapping, just like, like they are in our lives. And we're going to also be focusing on Sarah and uh, the, how the promises were fulfilled for her. And I know you may be thinking, okay, that's all right for Abraham and Sarah, but um, <laughs> speaking for myself, I don't want the promises of Sarah to be fulfilled in my life. I mean, I'd like to be hot at age 70, but I would not like to be a first-time mother at age 90. So you're probably wondering, well, what are the promises that I can hold on to? And I've got a great one for you today. Um, in Luke, um, it says, um, come unto me, Jesus says, you who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. And weary, as, as circumstances continue, you know, the passage of time makes a simple circumstance become heavier and it becomes more burdensome. And you're finding that even if you're just only trapped in the uh, house with, with your children <laughs> where you've never had that experience before, you know, in, in difficult circumstances, husbands are finding out how valuable the service of their wives is in doing housework now that they're having to help with it. <laughs> but Jesus said, I'll give you rest. And most translations of the Bible phrase it just that way. I will give you rest. And it's as if it's a commodity, something that he has and he parcels it out to you, kind of like standing in line outside of Walmart during the COVID-19, you know, you're, you wait in line and you get given it, given something, or you get the opportunity to, to go get something. And, uh, but 
the the verb in Greek is an active verb. He it doesn't say I will give you rest as a commodity. He says I will rest you. It's an active verb. That's what he wants to do for you. And he wants not only that, he says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me because my yoke is easy and my burden's light. And so what he's saying is, I'll trade snowballs with you. I'll trade wheelchairs with you. Take my yoke and I will do something active for you. Another um, thing that I learned interesting thing about the way Jesus interacts with people was the um, passage where it says that he um, took little children into his arms. But that also is an active verb. He armed them. You know, he kind of grabbed them with his arm and, and armed them. Here's the great thing about this is you don't have to make your, your rest happen. Um, exercise is good. You know, getting enough sleep is good. Going for a walk is good. You know, meditating and, and other things are good. But he says, learn of me. Make a connection with me. And he says, I'll trade burdens with you. I want you to turn off the news today, at least for a while, and let Jesus arm you. Let him uh, rest you. Come to him and let him do that for you. Bless you, my brothers and sisters.